Hey folks, if you'd like to support me or this channel, Moose University, in creating more video tutorials, then please consider making a financial contribution at my website, MoofUniversity.com. Thanks and enjoy the video. I'd like to wrap up the discussion of lipids by talking about sterols and steroids. Um, so their basic structure is based on this idea of a steroid nucleus. Steroid nucleus, which I've drawn here. It's these this four ring system. Three of them are six-membered rings, and this last one is a five-membered ring. And this whole situation is nearly planar. The rings are referred to as the A ring, B ring, C ring, and D ring. Now, so all steroids have this basic structure, this basic four-ring system. They vary slightly from one to the other, but they have that same, same sort of situation going on. Their functions, they function as membrane components. And they can also function as um, signaling molecules, namely hormones. The major sterol in animals is cholesterol. And its structure is like this. It looks like that. It is a, a it is an amphipathic molecule, which means it has polar and nonpolar portions. Its polar portion is actually pretty small. It's just this OH group here. Right? It's got a polar OH. The rest of the molecule, though, is just hydrocarbons, right? Carbons and hydrogens. So the rest of it is nonpolar, which is why it can actually be a membrane component. It um, Specifically, in membranes, it plays a role in maintaining membrane fluidity. So if it gets too cold and a membrane sort of begins to become more rigid, cholesterol will play a role in helping it become more fluid. And if it becomes a little bit too fluid and might break apart, it becomes, allows it to become a little bit more rigid uh, to maintain optimal fluidity levels. So cholesterol plays an important role there. It's also important as a precursor to other steroid molecules. In fact, um, something that's actually pretty important to that is uh, the numbering system of cholesterol. It's 27 carbons long, and it's numbered like this, starting from carbon number 1 right there. And we go around 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Then we jump up here to 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. And then these two methyl groups, 18, 19, and then 20 through 27 are on this, this end over here. Um, this, the numbering system might not seem really important right now, but there are certain enzymes involved in the in sort of converting one amino or what not excuse me not one amino acid one uh, steroid uh, molecule to another, and the the names of the enzymes sometimes refer to where they're actually doing whatever it is they're doing. Uh, for as an example, there's an enzyme called there's an enzyme called 5 alpha reductase. And what that does, that molecule is actually what takes testosterone, testosterone, and turns it into uh, uh, di dihydrotestosterone, which or or DHT. And the enzyme name, 5-alpha reductase, its action, it's it's reducing the 5-carbon of testosterone to to become. Uh, dihydrotestosterone or DHT. So that's just one example. There are other examples, but the point is that being familiar with the numbering system of the steroids is helpful in understanding the names of the enzymes in case you're studying those pathways. Okay, next up here, bile acids. So there are bile acids uh, that are that are steroids, and their their function really is to emulsify fats from our diet. And what that means is basically it takes these these gigantic fats that we're consuming and breaks them up into little smaller sort of uh, molecules that, that lipases can act on. Uh, and lipases will go through and, and, and break down the fats further from there. So I've just drawn here an example of a specific bile acid called torocolic acid. And the reason the toro portion of that name comes from this portion up here called taurine. And that taurine portion 
actually carries the acidic um, the acidic group that is carrying the negative charge after it has been deprotonated. Now, steroid hormones. Okay, steroid hormones. So these are the ones that I think a lot of people study. Uh, these first two up here are the sex steroids, and they are made in the reproductive organs. So over here, I've drawn the male sex steroid, and over here, I've drawn the female sex steroid. The male sex steroid is made in the male reproductive organ, which is the testes, and the female sex steroid is made in the ovaries, the female reproductive organ. So which two steroids are these? You may already have guessed it. This one is testosterone, and this one is estradiol. The names can make a little bit of sense. Um, this this uh, test com refers to the fact that these things are made in the testes. Uh, STER comes from uh, the S-T-E-R, steroid, and then O-N-E refers to ketone. So we got a ketone right there. So it's basically saying male sex steroid, and it has a ketone in it. Um, estradiol, estro refers to estrus, um, and the the diol refers to two alcohols. There's an alcohol there and an alcohol there. So these names can make a little bit of sense. They're not always like, surefire, um, but they can they can sometimes make a little bit of sense. Um, okay, next up, three and four. Three and four are the corticosteroids because they are made in the adrenal cortex. So cortex, cortico, corticosteroids. They're also called corticoids for short. Uh, the first one over here to the left is a glucocorticoid, and this one over here to the right is a um, mineralocorticoid mineral o corticoid and you may have guessed the, the names of these this one is cortisol and this one is aldosterone cortisol is a stress hormone and the reason it's called a glucocorticoid is because of its effects on blood glucose levels aldosterone is a mineralocorticoid because of its effects on the minerals in our body specifically uh, sodium Right, sodium is uh, a mineral, and so aldosterone uh, plays a role in l uh, sodium levels. So, so it's a mineralocorticoid. And the own against again here, the own refers to ketone. Um, cortisol also has a ketone, but it doesn't have it. It doesn't end in own, but up here it does have some alcohols, so that ol might refer to these alcohols up here. Um, cortisol's name doesn't really lend too much to its structure, um, but cortisol and al aldosterone are both corticoids because they're made and released from the adrenal cortex. This last one here, number five, is uh, a synthetic corticoid. Oh, <laughs> synthetic corticosteroid. Synthetic corticosteroid, and it's actually called uh, prednisone. Okay, so prednisone is used uh, to treat um, anti-inflammatory diseases anti-inflammatory diseases um, and it is an immunosuppressant drug so though it can treat anti-inflammatory diseases um, because of its immunosuppressive um, uh, effects it can leave patients, patients susceptible to infections so um, I don't know I'm just as soon as I, I heard that I thought okay so if someone is taking prednisone for some sort of disease we might want to make sure that you know we make sure that everything that we give them is pretty clean and free from infections because they're especially susceptible to infections now all these steroid hormones can it, it basically are important in signaling so because they are steroid hormones they can um, they will uh, somehow make their way to the the nucleus of of um, of a cell and alter gene transcription. These guys alter; they exert their effects by altering transcription of of genes. Okay. Well, I hope that video was helpful in kind of introducing steroids and wrapping up.
lipids. Thanks for watching. Yo, if you found that video helpful, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe for more content. And if you know anybody who might find the videos helpful, then please share it with them. Thanks. Happy studying.